mid patch update bug fixes fixed a bug that caused Q to draw minion aggro despite it being a despite it being a single target spell single target spells do draw minion aggro whoever did this didn't know that they changed this like four years ago that single target spells now do draw minion aggro unless this is meant to be it's aoe fixed a bug that caused Aurelian souls q breath of light to not resume after casting is ERW. All right, so we didn't feel that, but that's probably why. That was probably what they were talking about. Fixed a bug that caused the Q to be reduced by half on subsequent enemies affected by the ability instead of dealing half the damage inflicted on the primary. Okay. Uh, Thresh got a... got a 60% AP. This will result in a 0.6 damage per soul. Okay. Okay, that's true, right? You get a little bit of extra souls. So they're just adding AP ratios. Kind of, you know, the souls will do it. Not that you should be building AP or anything. But Shirelia's maybe gets a little extra extra fan from this. All right, let's check it out. We we knew that these were coming. Okay, there's the Aurelian soul. That makes a lot more sense now. Mana cost increased on his Q. Makes sense because they want the support to not be able to spam it as much. And the e, e base damage is going to be lower at all ranks no no lower early but higher late i'm surprised that they didn't just give some ap ratio that way when you build some items the jungler doesn't get hit too much annie some massive reworks uh she'll now spawn with the stun ready that is a big change gives her a lot more play in the beginning of the game the molten shield is now a one a one tap effect rather than every time they hit you getting burned back it's now just once boom uh, cooldown is going down by two seconds. That's great. Uh, there's actually going to be a point in the game when you get about 65 haste that you should be able to keep it almost entirely up. Retaliation magic damage. So this was the shield strength. Got a 20% AP ratio. The retaliation damage now has extra 20% and 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 more damage. Again, because it's just one tick. So the first tick will deal more, but subsequent ticks will deal less. Retaliation magic damage conditions. While it's active, enemies whole ba ho whose basic attacks hit the shield receive ma magic damage. Instead, it's now when it's active, enemy whose basic attacks and spells hit the magic, the, the shield should receive magic damage. Now the question is whether or not it's once or if it's multiple. Molten shield will now only inflict damage against opponents once per target. There you go, per shield. So there it is. Only happens once. But it can be done with spells, which is a huge, huge improvement for her mid lane matchups. Uh, and the fact that it's higher burst damage, and it's just only a little bit worse against champions that were auto attacking you, which was not her bad matchup. Summon Tibbers. It's Tibbers health going up by what? A significant amount. Okay. Especially like. All right, so this is greater later in the game when you have like 600 AP, 400 to 600. This number is higher, but relative to your 3,100 health, it's actually a bigger bonus for early in the game. Tibber's resistances, 30, 60, 90, are now 30, 60, 90 with an AP ratio. Interesting. Also just a big buff. Tibber's movement speed going up finally because other people just could run away from Tibber's in the late game. You needed to have Rylai's for him to stick. Now he'll be able to stick without it, but I imagine Rylai's will still be good. Uh, Jarvan, base armor increased, W cooldown decreased, shields now it scales with AD, but the duration is decreased. All right, there had to be a trade-off somewhere. So you get it more often, it's bigger, and it has 80% bonus AD, which you... Uh, my recommended build build for Jarvan starts with Umbral Glaive. So when you start Umbral Glaive, you'll just get an extra 40 power to the shield but the duration is going to be down by a second so less of those like lingering long timers on it but that's okay like you just want it to block some burst it's going to be up more often and it's going to be bigger uh, and his base armor goes up so Jarvan probably skyrocketing to the top of the jungle tier uh Cassante base health increased hey health growth increased they must have taken stuff away q knockup and stun duration decreased w minimum stun duration decreased this is when you just do the uh, tap effect our bonus resistances lost increased 
So uh, here's the important thing is that this gets translated into your offensive stats. So while this is a nerf, it's also a buff because you get all these stats into your AD. Uh, so you should be able to kill people faster in your all-out form. Um, this is probably going to outweigh the the difference of what's going on, unless they meant for this to just be a loss and you now only get 65% of those stats back into your AD, but you're supposed to get all of this, so we'll see if that makes a big difference. But the uh, knock-up duration goes down by a third of a second. The stun duration uh, gets normalized to one. So basically combined, you used to be able to get two to two and a quarter. Now you're just going to get 1.65. Uh, so big nerf to his Q3, minimum stun duration, this was when you just tap it, uh, no longer getting a, a three quarter of a second stun, which is what you wanted to do. Uh, basically, you used your W to set up your Q, right? Q3, you'd go Q1, you go E-Q2 to slow them, they hit, you charge up your W, you smash in, then you Q them over your head, and then you all out back into your turret. So that was the pattern with Cassante. It's going to be a lot harder because this short window... Also, all of his abilities, including his R, even the Q had a stun moment, followed by the, the knock-up. The W has a stun. The R has a stun. You can buy Merc Treads now, and you should be able to get out of these sequences. The question will be whether or not this, uh, if you get something like Merc Treads, whether or not you're just going to die to getting punched in the face. So, probably still going to be a good champion this uh it's going to be we, we need to find out whether or not this is going to do what it's intended to um certainly the first people that limit test are going to be the ones that know whether or not you can go for these kills and i bet you can cassidy and e-based damage decreased absolutely needed it this champ i don't know what they were thinking with the last changes uh, Cassidy continues to cast a win. Well, also he's a counter pick, so he should naturally have a high win rate. You don't ever want to pick him into champions like Tristana or even something like Talon and Zed because uh, he's high magic resist plus the magic passive and he's got low armor. Uh, so basically you should only be counter picking Cassidy and counter picks should have a 55 to 60% win rate. So it's not awful. The problem would arise if he's still winning over 50% against his bad matchups. Uh, base damage is going down by 20 early. Wow. Um, this is, it's not the end of the world. A lot of people have realized that E is what you want to max. You can put one or even just two points in the Q for laning, a little bit of harass. But since most times you're just using the laning phase to get last hits, the Q doesn't really matter. Ever since they made the change to the Q where the shield comes instantly, not on impact, you've been able to negate basically all of a mage's damage when they when they try to trade on you. And so it has its effect, and then you just max this E for wave clear and for burst. So uh, you won't feel this by level 7, level 9. You won't really feel this change. That's when you're looking to come on. But they are pronouncing a weakness early in the game. Uh, the important part is the cooldown for nearby casts. You're not going to be able to just spam your E in late game team fights anymore. Rift Walk. 80 to 120 so it's losing 10 damage you're keeping the mana ratio uh, bonus damage per stack however also going down by five keeping the ratio so you are losing 10 and then five per stack so at four stacks you're looking at 30 30 damage off of his r it's not nothing right it, at the part of the game where you're getting r5 off on someone you're usually going to be killing them anyways but this does this should take away some of those instances where someone like Cassidy could run down tank rise and and kill them and it really shouldn't be that way. Kale passive move bonus move speed increased e on hit AP scaling increased missing health damage increased so the execute value is going up. Uh, passive going up all right so when you're hitting champions you get this speed this is very good for your late game this difference uh, is actually fairly consequential late in the game your ability to chase is gated by this so an extra two percent is actually pretty big passive on hit damage the base amount is the same bonus ad is the same and it's just king 25 now they say that the execute is going up but it's not listed here so i think they missed it Kane shadow assassin damage increased as it should because passive is down but this is going to result as it does in many other cases like check this out Kane's going to be listed as a buff so 
What happened last time Kane got buffed is his win rate went down because more people will play him. Now, this is actually the second time in a row that his, that his blue form's been buffed, so maybe people have had a little bit more experience why this is going up. But, uh, but yeah, the blue build tends to be worse. Just build red. Like, you, they need to have four squishies for you to want to be blue. And even then, sometimes your team, like, dictates that you need to have a, a red cane. Uh, Shadow Kane hasn't been the terror for Shadows he once was, suffering particularly hard in lower skill brackets because he's really hard to play. Shadow Assassin bonus, 15 to 45 based on level. Okay. Going up by 2 to 5%. Q Reaping Slash. The damage has 15% more bonus AD. Uh, it will not affect Rost's damage as he has separate Q values. Okay. So just a buff to the blue cane. I guess they're like telling everyone, hey, like red cane's better. Just do red cane. LeBlanc. Let's see if they're trying to exacerbate some of her weaknesses. Mana regen going up. Uh, mana cost going to 50. Hello. And cooldown on the R going down by 10 seconds early. Hello. Uh, I don't see how she doesn't take over in pro play. Right now, you couldn't really play LeBlanc because Kassadin existed. Now, Kassadin gets banned a lot, and there's a lot of champions that they would preempt, kind of daring you to take Kassadin, and they would look for counter picks. But uh, LeBlanc with lower cooldowns and lower mana costs, this is a pretty big difference. I already think that Q has overtaken W as the better, as the better max, and now that you don't even get penalized with a mana cost... Uh, I think that her kill potential with Q with a Q5 at level 9 is going to be very high, and probably Q4 and R1 going to be lethal most times in lane at, at level 6 and 7. AD ratio increased, E base damage decreased, but the slow is increased. Okay. So 110% of his bonus AD, kind of incentivizing you to keep on building damage. Uh, another one of those champions that could easily go collector into Navori Quick Blades. So I have to be careful about that. Although you tend to be too squishy if you build like that, you, you need to be very upfront. And you also need to be careful about your energy costs because your cooldowns will start overlapping with your energy regen. Uh, total damage going down by a lot. Ooh, a lot. What? Wow. Okay, so they, they neutered the E. Why? They're increasing the slow at max ranks to 80%. All right, overall, this is a big nerf. This is a very big nerf. Lee Sin rarely gets to be strong in the hands of us mortals since his skill cap is so high. We don't want to lower his skill expression, so by granting him more damage in mid-game... And a bit more utility late game. But this but this is like part of your clear. Getting getting points in E, like nerfing his clear by this much, this is absurd. Like it's gonna it's gonna take him a minute to kill Raptors now. You're ca you're definitely going to need to cast twice. Unless there's something I'm not that I'm not seeing about this. Like this is really gonna impact his clear speed. So if did they list Lee Sin as a buff? I wouldn't be surprised if his win rate went down. Yeah, he's not even listed here because he was quote-unquote adjusted. Trundle, cooldown decreased at all ranks. Discovered his passion for dancing. Yay. Uh, cooldown down by two. All right, that's just great. Then he needed a little bit love. He got hit super hard. Basically, single target champions got way too good with the new jungle changes with the uh, Pokemon that you got on the side being able to be your source of AoE damage, but because they got so strong, they got nerfed. So Trundle was the first and foremost on that list. So they give him a little bit of love back, and now he dances faster based on his move speed. That's funny. Uh, Zach has been slingshotting himself into all lanes. So let's see what the changes are. Base numbers are the same. Percentage is the same. Down 1% per 100 AP. Uh, that's definitely hitting his Demonic Embrace build. And magic damage on the E, losing 10% of its AP as well. And base damage. So, all right. Yeah, they're, they're definitely hitting the, the AP ratios. I mean, when you think about it, this was pretty insane how high these AP ratios were.
and he could do so much extra damage just by building like radiant virtue into demonic embrace he was he was a terror uh radiant virtue the the undersung king of the patch like ever since the preseason people have been undervaluing this item uh finally it caught up and now most people build it first and a lot of different champions let's see the changes 200 more cooldown by 30 seconds holy crap uh the guiding light maximum health gained though is up by 15 percent. so it's just been adjusted right it's way longer to get it online but you're going to get a better effect total healing used to be 8 to 16 percent now it's 12 percent okay so better right when you get it now i bet this this moment when you get it it's going to be right during this range anyways so in general the healing is going to be a little bit lower but the max health is higher ability haste you and allies do no longer get the ability haste wow people don't, didn't realize how how sick this item really was like all all the text on it was just a layer it was just a layer of abilities uh still my favorite item on jarvan all right so you go umbral glaive into radiant virtue and and you build out tank from there Right, so Umbral Glaive takes care of the early game, gives you a lot of extra power, makes you strong for uh, getting around on scene. You can even add Yumu's into it, but then you just go Radiant Virtue for this one-stop shop tank item, lets you dive into fights, and every time that you cast your ultimate, uh, it gives you a big healing circle. So now the more people in there, the merrier for your team. Speaking of Umbral Glaive, it's currently too cost-effective. The cooldown's going up by 10 seconds, and ranged champions are finally going to hit for two, not for three. Uh, so no more one-shotting the wards, Miss Senna. Umbral Glaive will no longer instantly kill traps. Huh, why not? I guess it made it a little bit too feels bad if you're playing a champion like Teemo to have an Umbral Glaive on the enemy team. They just walk up, kill four of your shrooms just like that. Overheal has not been good in a long time. The value is going from 10 plus amount of your maximum health to 20 to 300 based on your level, making much simpler to understand. Uh, slight, huh. It's definitely a, a nerf early, for sure. Right, there we go. Level five onwards is, is where you get the, um, the difference. Although your maximum health, I don't know if that's true. This is for marksmen, for sure. But if there was there were some uh, some situations where we liked the extra healing, for example, on Shivana with Radiant Virtue, where you just got an insane amount of uh, extra healing from this, and it kind of just kept you topped off at that extra nine percent of your maximum health. It was that was a lot of lot of extra. Uh, but in general, for most people who are using it, this is going to be a buff. Melee support adjustments. This was what Freak had worked on. Now, I wonder if they're going to have to roll this back because Alistar has already been seen in the top lane as a counter to Jax. Uh, and suddenly he's also getting these other changes. So self-heal is now 5% of your maximum health instead of uh, this hard to understand. Uh, the ally heal is 6% of his health. Good. Again, easier to understand. Mana cost on his Q has gone down by 5 the magic damage, going getting a 20% AP ratio, again, affecting something like Demonic Embrace. Uh, I just have to look ahead. Did they change this item? No. They're just talking about the, uh, the fact that it, that it got nerfed previously. All right, so anyways... Demonic Embrace is going to give you some extra effect here. Headbutt also goes down in cost. Magic damage gaining an AP ratio. Why, why, I see a pattern here. They just keep on doing this. They give these tanks these more ratios to give people more options to play. I think it's largely around ARAM as well to give you more options for playing. But like, this is a, like, look at this. That's 160 AP ratio. That's a lot. So if you, if you have a Lich Bane Alistar, and you headbutt pulverize into an auto attack and you've got 300% scaling on your abilities, that's going to be a lot of damage, right? That's gonna, like That could easily be 1,200 damage. E-trample mana cost also going down and total magic damage also having an AP ratio. So you turn this on, fly, you fly, uh, this is kind of insane. Like the AP ratios are nuts on this. 
Why why does he need to have these? He's already so ingrained into a thing. I think Freak just wants a like pet build to to be good on him. Uh, you ever since like what five years ago, four years ago, the headbutt used to hit, and on the way that they were moving, you could always get a an attack off. They got rid of that, so you're not getting that effect. But if you headbutt pulverize, then you will be able to get your hit. Uh, plus, Trample wants you to get an auto attack off anyways, so it's not like Lich Bane's bad. Uh, I could easily see a top lane build that goes Rod of Ages. You could go tank builds, but Rod of Ages into uh, Tear and Demonic Embrace, right? You could even go Frozen Heart to get the extra mana. Um, you could also go tank item like Radiant Virtue. Um and Abyssal Mask, right? Because all of his abilities are working at melee range, so the Abyssal Mask is always going to give you the reduction, plus you're holding people down long enough, and then you can use your AP ratios to kind of kick some butt. So there might be a world. I don't want to put it in the Rocket Belt category, but like these ratios are pretty high where you're going to be incentivized for jumping in there. And something with movement, either Everfrost or, or Rocket Belt or just Lich Bane in general, with Abyssal Mask uh, and Demonic Embrace. So you could go like Tank Item just to like have the tank stats. You can go Sunfire into Abyssal Mask. You can go Sunfire Jack Show Abyssal Mask. That's probably the like the best. And then Demonic Embrace fourth. Um, or if you're just a support and you're Shirelias, you're just going to get a lot of extra ability here. Brom, stand behind Brom. Concussive blows, target immunity. Uh, get slightly improving based on levels, no big deal. The Q going down to a six second cooldown. It's already that, so you just get a little bit early at level one, but this is where he was strongest. I don't know why they need that. He's just not a popular pick, but he's very, very good. Bonus armor and magic resist going up by 10? Why? Okay. Brom, Brom, just like skyrocketing to the top of the tier. Like, why why wouldn't you play this champion now? And why wouldn't you play Zaya, Zeri, Kaisa, Ezreal, the, Caitlyn, these champions that can go in mid lane and, and run away from anything or they've got tools to keep themselves alive? Brom, at plus one, Brom, Zeri, for example, what are they ever going to do to you? If you're mid lane, both of you can get away. Zeri can even, you can move next to a wall. This is one of the fun things. Zeri can start gliding over the wall. Braum can click on uh, on them as they're flying so that they both get the dash. Uh, Braum, Zeri is going to go to the top of the charts for sure. In pro play. Nautilus, staggering blow. Uh, the base damage is going up, all right, by six early. Not That's not nothing in the old top lane builds. He used to use this a lot. Uh, speaking of top lane, Titan's Wrath, Wrath going down by 20 mana. The shield strength is going up by 10. All right, so this was your main trading tool up in top lane. You had E and W, right? You used your Q as a 1-point wonder. Um, now, it's just higher by 10 at every level. That's not bad. And the mana cost went down, so it's a little bit more spammable. Riptide getting 20% scaling and 20% to the points all right so uh it's kind of ch changed the order that you want compared to support and top lane you're definitely going to see a top lane nautilus come up somewhere It'd be interesting to to have to relearn matchups or or new learn them for the first time things like gwen Cassante have uh, become part of the scene ever since nautilus uh, was changed to strictly be a support but, I don't know, this uh, this is definitely going to be a top lane build for sure. Pike Phantom Undertow, physical damage goes up by, a, what, 40 damage? So 10 per rank after the first? Wow. Uh, well, most people weren't putting many points in E, so that makes sense. Rakan, cooldown going down by 1. Mana cost going down by 15. And the base heals going up. Grand Entrance? What? Why? Oh, this one. All right. Sorry. The damage went down. Okay. They gave him some AP ratio, but they took away some damage. Putting it more power into the gleaming, gleaming quill. Thresh. Magic damage. Going up 30% AP. Uh, oh, this got hot fixed. It was a little bit too much. Shield per soul. Okay. 
going a little bit down, affecting his scaling since I gave him some scaling elsewhere. Magic damage, 40%. Do they get rid of the ratio? Same note applies here. Will result in 0 0.6. So this is a change based on souls. Okay, so no, it's all numbers tweaking us. Okay, tenacity. Over the years, tenacity sources have increased dramatically. We want to streamline how these effects interact with each other as a cleanup to an old system that will provide some clarity on which systems stack well and which don't. With these changes, almost all tenacity effects will stack multiplicatively uh, net weaker when you get them together as opposed to the previous system where various systems sometimes stacked extremely well. They said that they had gotten rid of this sort of stacking, so this just seems like they've missed it. I don't know. Tenacity sources within the same group will stack multiplicatively. So that's going to be your Mercury's Treads, Elixir of Iron. These are all your consumables. Unflinching from the Tree, Moss Stopper, Chemdeck Dragon. Okay, this is most of them. So your extra tenacity from the Silver Mirror Dawn Active and from Cleanse and from uh, the buffs in other modes. Okay. And then Brittle, Orn W, and Courage, Garen W. So these are their own champion-dependent de things. So that's going to be its own group. Your items that you buy, they only put on Silver Mirror Dawn. It's not on Quicksilver, Sash. And then all the other, like, normal sources. Okay. Jungle Adjustments. Holy shit. Jungle. Smite fights are for champions. Jungle companions can no longer deal lethal damage to epic monsters. There's a comma here. Does that mean that they also do end to buffs, or is it supposed to be a period? Uh, big changes again. So this has gone down from 50 to 35 to 30 to 20. The gold per tree keeps on getting nerfed because junglers are too good. Experience per jungle camp with a companion uh, has been increased. So... So you are getting a little bit more love in the form of experience, but less in gold. Uh, early vision has proven to deter early ganks in the past, especially in high skill levels. While we don't want to go back to giving teams permanent map visibility, we do think some extra vision will help curb the amount of early ganks currently happening online. Given that you have two players in bot lane, there should be a safe way to introduce more vision, leveraging the dual lane's unique strengths. So the trinket cooldown... Going up by 30 seconds early, that is huge for pro play. Huge. Every team needs to remap and retime and retool based on this 240 seconds. Right? This makes a world of difference. The ability to actually get another ward down. And if you get a ward down, you're looking at a four-minute window that, uh, that they won't have one to place down. And since the early duration is fairly low, you're basically looking two and a half to three minutes that you're going to have of darkness uh, in that position. Ganking success with the same intent of deterring a large amount of early ganks. We're upping early tower damage so that the benefits of early dives also come with an appropriate level of risk. This is for elite play. As a reminder, turret shots ramp up by 40% per shot against the same target. So turret damage is going up by 20. Ooh. Okay. So, yeah, th I mean this is going to be this is going to be 20 plus 28 plus uh 37 something like this. No, 34 39. So, that damage is going to hit. It's not it's not something that's going to stop you from being able to do turret dives, but uh, again, they may have to retool. You're, you're so used to, as a pro player, you're so used to seeing chunk, 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 and you're good. But now there's some times where it's going to go chunk, chunk, and you're not going to realize it, but you're actually going to go to zero health um, because the total accumulated extra damage, right? Extra 20, then it's an extra 28. So that's 48 plus an extra 39. Suddenly you've taken uh, 77 extra or 87 extra damage that you weren't expecting uh, in those situations. So, right, rather than surviving with one bar, you might be dead. Other changes compared to a previous season, Jungle Companions are bringing a lot more burst damage into the game, particularly against epic monsters. Well, they finally got rid of that change that made it so that you were able to one-shot, not one-shot, but 1v1 the Baron. This has caused situations where some champions appear from Fog of War and their companions also appear 
uh, and secure an accidental steal. Yeah, we believe that securing epic monster secures and steals should be as intentional as possible. So we're adding one more rule to the jungle to give some additional clarity so they can't kill it. Okay. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps the channel out a lot. I'll catch you guys next time. Keep it surreal. Peace.